Isaiah chapter number 5. It's kind of funny. I've studied all afternoon in my study in John chapter 15. We was headed here tonight and didn't say anything to anybody. And Gabrielle said, Daddy, are you going to preach out of John 15 tonight? I said, no, but I was going to. And she said, Daddy, I thought you would. And she's never said anything about any of that, so I kind of dazed and confused me for a minute. We're just going to try to follow the Lord yes. and be obedient this evening. Isaiah chapter number 5. Thank God for the Word of God. Isaiah chapter number 5, verse number 1. The Bible said, Now will I say to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it, and he gathered out the stones thereof, and he planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and he looked, and it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Yeah. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my yeah. vineyard that I've not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked, it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Father, we thank you and we praise you for who and all that you are. Lord, we thank you for many blessings upon our life. Lord, just how good you've been to us, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house this evening. Lord, just ask you to lead, guide, and direct everything that's said and done here tonight. Lord God, deal with us, draw us closer to you, help us to be more like you, and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. <clears throat> Very, very familiar reading this evening, and anybody that's been around the Bible long has read this, has probably got a good, deep understanding of it, but it just caught my eye and my attention this evening as I sat in my study. We see here in verse 1 that, that God, the, the beloved, and I'm glad he's the beloved, he's the well-loved, but I'm glad tonight that we're his well-loved, amen. amen, we're his beloved, even though he's the one that should be loved, I'm glad he loves us, even when we didn't and when we don't love him. him. I'm glad that he still loves us. This vineyard, of course, he has a vineyard. And this vineyard he's dealing with here, we could read verse 7. We could find out for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is Israel. But I believe that we could kind of make a comparison here, a typology, and, and compare Israel to the church tonight. Amen. And I believe that that would be fair without taking away or robbing or arresting into the scriptures that yeah. if we was to look at that. But we see his love for it. We see how he loves for it. He cares for it. He, he looks down on it. He sees it. He sees it's hurting. He sees it struggling. He sees that it's not what it ought to be. And, and instead of throwing it away, instead of destroying it, he tries to help it. And he digs it and he dugs it. And he fertilizes it. When Christ came and, and walked upon the earth, that olive tree as it was, he could have just destroyed it and thrown it out. But I'm glad he don't throw the clay away tonight. But I'm glad he molds it. He makes it. And, and he does, does, desires for it to prosper. I'm glad for that. Yeah, I'm glad for that. We see that not only does he give it a song, but he sings it a song. Yeah. Well, more. I'm glad God gives us a song in our storm, yeah. and God gives us a song yeah. in the night. But could you imagine God singing a song to you? Yeah. Our sweet Savior. I, I often wonder what some of those songs that Sister Brenda and some of the others have sung them here in the past out of the book of Psalms. And, and I often wonder what it might be like hearing the psalmist David and the children of Israel singing some of those songs. And, and my, how wonderful that must have sounded. How wonderful that must have been as they traveled to and fro as weary pilgrims. But what would it be like tonight, beloved, if God himself just sat you down as Christian sang you a song? Amen. How lovely would that be? How caring would that be? He sees their struggles. He sees their issues. He sees their problems. And he loves them enough to help them anyway. Yeah. My, what a Savior. But notice we, we see his care for his children in the place that he's placed there. His Bible said he placed them on a very fruitful hill. Not just on any hill. Not just on good ground, not just on fruitful ground, but on a very fruitful hill. This is to say a blessed or a prosperous place. Amen. And I'm glad that you and I tonight that are saved, we're in a good place tonight, beloved. We are in Christ. We are in the body. We are in the beloved. We're in the bride, amen. We are the building, amen. God's put you and I in a good place, a place that we should never wither, a place that we should never wilt, a place that will never die, amen. God's put us in a good place tonight. And I'm glad for that. The blessings in Christ are unending. And I don't can't get yeah. off on that tangent or I won't get to where we're trying to get to. Well, in verse number two, 
Not only does he sing it a song, not only does he love it, not only does he put it in a fruitful place, but the first thing he does after that, he decides where it, what it is and where it is and where he wants it, and he puts it in a prosperous place, and then he fenced it. Yeah. Once he put me in Christ, he protected me. Yeah. Aren't you glad for that? I'm protected tonight. He's not lost one, amen, that the Father's given. Yeah. He said, if I'd come unto him, he would in no wise cast me out. And he yeah. said, my Father's greater than all. And amen, no man can pluck you out of his hand. I'm glad we're in a good place tonight in Christ, yeah. aren't you? Amen. Yeah. But we see, the, we see the protection. Remember, he said he's our refuge. That word refuge. Hey, well, we've got a safe hiding place, yeah. amen. No matter how strong the storm, no matter how bad the winds, no matter the situation, the circumstances, I, I'm glad we've got a refuge that we can run to. That's right. This fence or wall was made to keep the enemy out. Yes. The Sunday school teacher this morning read about Job over there. And he was dealing with Job. And I saw some things. We might share some here a little bit. It wasn't anything necessarily that he taught. It was like God was, was doing just as he read the Word of God. I like that, Brother Woody. When you're just reading the Word, it comes alive and the Spirit starts ministering. That's wonderful. But he read about Job and that hedge that he had and how Satan couldn't get there and touch him unless God removed the hedge. But I'm glad even when God removed the hedge and let Satan get in, God still reminded him and showed him some things. Amen. But there's a fence about us tonight. The reality is, is you and I, we have something better than just a fence. We've got something better than a wall. We have been sealed until the day of redemption. We talked, we sang that song earlier, and, and I'm not beating the song. I like the song, but it said, my comforter abides with me. I'm going to go further than that, brother. He don't abide with me. He abides in me. Amen. I'm glad Christ in me is the hope of glory that I have tonight. It's him being inside of me. But we've got God living inside us. We're, we're saved by the Spirit of God. We're kept yeah. by the Spirit of God. So he fenced this thing. Yeah. Then after he got the fence put up, he started walking through and looking around a little bit. And he said, you know, I, I've got the best seed as we'll see here in a minute. I've got this big fence around it. Nothing can get in. Nothing can harm it. Nothing can hurt it now. But there's still some stones in here. And we talked about stones back there in revival that night. Remember, we've got some stones about us. We've got some stones we need to remove. But, but God said, I tell you what, I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove these stones. I'm going to get these rocks. This is a picture type of cleansing. Even though we've been saved and born again by the good grace of God, we've got some things that's not pleasing to our Father inside of us that hindered the growth that He would have for us. And, and I'm glad He was willing to go in and remove these things and, and take care of them. Amen. We've talked before about the things in a garden and, and all these things. You take a garden, you take a tiller or a hole or whatever, and you cut them out and you pull them loose out of the root system. Yeah. And sometimes it causes the plant hinder it for a little while, but then it bears forth fruit. Yeah, I used to think we used to have several apple trees and cherry trees there where I grew up at. When first planted them, it took forever to get fruit on them. It took a while, but then they began to mature. When they matured, they would bloom. They would blossom and bloom and was loaded with fruit. But over time, they got all these extra branches and got all this extra stuff on them. And when the storm would come, it would destroy them. So Papa would go out there and he would take a limb saw or a pair of snippers or a chainsaw, depending on how big it was and where it was, and he would cut that thing. And I mean, it went from this great big bushy thing, it looked like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree after he was done with it sometimes. And man, there was blood sap coming out of that thing. And it seemed like it hurt him. But you know what? When it got rid of all that stuff, when it was fruit season, it bore what it needed to bore. Preacher, what he said, too many times we're weighted down with the cares and the burdens of this world, this life, and we can't be fruitful for God because we got some stones about us. We got some things there that need to be removed. God doesn't use a tiller or a hose, though. He cleanses us with the water of the Word. Yeah. Amen. He cleanses us with those things. Yeah. If we're not careful, it'll hinder our spiritual growth yeah. and, and will harden our heart to things that we shouldn't harden it to. Right. But not only did He build this wall, not only did He go in and remove the rocks, but it says, and planted the choicest vine. He gave them the best of everything, the yes, best ground, yeah. the biggest, nicest wall, removed the stones. Now they've got this good soil, and there's no reason it shouldn't prosper. Yes. I remember God did a heart transplant on me. Yeah. He reached in and took an old stony heart, stony heart, put in a heart of flesh, one that he could mold, one that he could make, one that he could work with. And, and he did that. When he done that, he gave me the best seed. 
the Word of God. Amen. He gave me a seed that would prosper, a seed that would grow even in darkness, a seed that could grow even in stony places, a seed that would bring forth much fruit. Yes. He gave us a good seed. Yes. God gave us everything we might grow and prosper in Christ. Yes. And God was expecting that, and He still is. Preacher, why would you say that? What was the next thing He did? He built a tower in the midst of it. Yeah. What is that tower for? That tower is for the watchman. Yes. So not only has He put the good dirt there, He's given us the good seed, the Word of God. Not only has He done all these things and built a wall around us to protect us, but He's sitting there watching over us. Amen. Isn't that wonderful knowing that He's standing right there watching over us? He's looking after us. We've got a Father up above who is looking down in love and He's looking after us. That's the reason we don't have to tell Him what He needs. He already knows. He knows where we're at. He knows what we're facing. He knows what we're going through. He's interested in you and I. Why? Because He cares about you. Yeah. He put this watchman there to ensure the prosperity of this vineyard. He would sit and watch to ensure the vineyard was nurtured and that it was fertilized and that it had exactly what it needed. That's the reason he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory because that's for his work, for his will. Yeah, that's the will. reason if we'll, if we'll come together in agreement, he'll give us what we need. He'll meet the need. Why? Because he wants us to prosper in Christ, not worldly, but spiritually. Amen. He would keep the harmful things away yeah. and keep them from ruining or destroying his heart. God sits and watches over us from on high, mm -hmm. supplying our need and protecting us, keeping mm -hmm. away things that are harmless. But not only does he think it's going to prosper and that he builds this tower, but notice the next thing he puts in a wine press. Yes. He puts in a wine press. He says, sure, everything I give, everything I've done, God has given his all for you, and he's given his all for yes. me, and he's made sure that we ought to prosper in Christ. Yes. So now he sets up this wine press. This is where the fruit would go from the vineyard. And the owner of the vineyard, and, and he would take and, and he would take those that worked and those that labored, and, and he would finally receive the reward of the vineyard. The Lord supplied all these things, and it ought to be successful. We ought to be fruitful. Yes. He's already installed this press, but now. We see the fruits of the labor. It ought to bring forth wine. You say, what's the importance of wine? Wine yeah. in the Bible is yeah. always a picture type of joy. Yeah. Our service for Him, our surrender to Him, the yeah. things we do for Him brings joy to Him. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Amen. That's the joy of the heart. It's the reward of the heart. Just pleasing our Father. Thank my, how wonderful is that? It pleases Him when we're fruitful. Notice he's got high hopes or expectations for his vineyard. He desires to save all. We know that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He desires for all to live godly in Christ Jesus. He loves all. He'll save all. And he looked that it should bring forth. He looked at it. He said it should bring forth. This should work. I'm talking about the one that created the heavens and the earth. The ones that put all the solar system in place. The one that created this body that man still can't figure out. God did all that. And he says, now I just want to grow some fruit. I want to bring forth my vineyard. Mm -hmm. And he looked that it should bring forth. God expects fruitfulness. I'll go beyond that. God requires fruitfulness. Yes. God requires faithfulness. Yes. Where much is given, much is required. Yes. But sadly, we see the result. It brought forth wild grapes. Yes. Wild grapes. I see more. The thing is, I don't know a whole lot about fruits and things of that nature, but a wild grape, a lot of time, it looks. It's got the resemblance of a good grape. It's got the resemblance of good fruit. But the taste isn't the same. It should be something sweet. It should be something desirable. But it's bitter. Amen. When I thought about that, I'm not being mean or hateful, but I'm telling you the truth. I began to think of most Christians in our day. Well, Thank Lord. We ought to be something sweet. We ought to be something desirable. But most of the time we're bitter. Yes. Because we're more worried about the cares of this world and the cares of this life yeah. than what the beloved has done for us. Yes. He's singing us a song. He's preparing us. He's making way yeah. for us. He's doing all these things. He sowed the seed. He's given everything that was needed. But now we see the weeds. We see the sin. We see the trouble. We read about the wheats and the tare, how they came up together. 
God's going to divide, amen. They're similar, but they're not the same. Something wild hasn't been tamed. It hasn't been broken. Yes. I've seen too many Christians that belong to themselves. They're owed mm -hmm. by everything. Yes. And they just want what they deserve. It's obvious they don't know what they deserve. I deserve to be in hell with my back yes. right. But I'm glad I didn't get what I deserved. I'm glad grace Thank came out of my way. I'm glad mercy came to where I was. I'm glad he came and saw me. Yes. And I'm glad he gave me what I needed instead yes. of what I wanted. Amen. Preacher, what are you saying? God's given everything we need to be fruitful as individuals, as families, as a church, as a community, as a country. But we fail to use what he gives us. Yes. And we don't end up with the proper results. That's it's, God has put this thing together, Brother, Brother Woody, almost like a recipe. Yes. That's My mama and grandmother and all them used to make cakes and pies and everything underneath the sun. It's some of the best stuff I ever eaten in my life. You can't wait just looking at it. But man, it tasted good. And you'd ask, how do you make that? What do you put in it? And they said, just a pinch of this or a dash of that. There wasn't nothing written down. Amen. And now I've tried to make stuff and it didn't turn out. Amen. My sister tried to make a cheesecake one time. She put water in it instead of milk. <laughs> it was a wild cheesecake, amen. <laughs> you see, it's important that you stir it right, that it's mixed right, that you get the right ingredients yeah. in it. See, our lives get out of balance and we yeah. more about this and more about that and less of him. Right? And then the balance doesn't come out right and we bring out less yeah. and less and less. But we see God's give the best thing. Yes, Jesus. He's did the most that he could do. And, yes, and now he begins to look in verse number three and he says, Oh, now inhabitants in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge. He's asking the believer, for those that he's dealing with, those that are in the vineyard. He asked, he said, Judge, I pray you between me and my vineyard. Yes. And he's beginning to wonder, What have I done? Yes. And then he asked the question, What could have done more to my vineyard that I hadn't done? I ask you a question tonight. What more could God do? What more could He do? He created the heavens and the yeah. earth. He made a law, even though it was a curse, and tried His best to teach men and show men right from wrong. He gave them a schoolmaster where they couldn't keep or do that. He came in the flesh in the form of His own begotten Son, and He laid down His life on Calvary, resurrected. Amen. He sent the Word of God. He gave the Spirit of God. He's given everything you and I need. If we die and go to hell, it ain't God's fault. Right. Right. If we're miserable tonight, we ain't got no peace or joy or victory about us. It ain't God's fault. But God's give the best of everything. He gave the best he had to offer. Paul was a good man, the apostles of the Gentiles, but he didn't send Paul to die for us. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Peter, James, John, David, the man after God's own heart. He didn't send them to die. He said, I'm going to give the very best. And he said, it's going to be on a hill, amen, on a hill called Calvary. Yeah. I'm going to go up to that thing. I'm going to take your cross, and I'm going to take it up a hill, and I'm going to lay down my life for you because I love you, amen. I'm going to give all that I've got. I'm going to give the best that I've got. But God came into his love unto us. And then while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gave all he had, church. What more can he do? There's buildings on every street corner. The internet's full of stuff. The TVs is full of stuff. There's radio programs going out everywhere. The gospel's being shared. What more can God do? What more can He do? Talked to a fellow the other day. He was talking about going to church and this, that, and other. Then he cussed a big old. He was talking about drinking. I said, I thought you were saved. I thought you were going to. Me and God's got a deal. Honey, I've got news for you. God made one deal over 2,000 years ago and it was on Calvary. You'll come through it by the blood or you won't come at all. There ain't no deal. God don't make deals, amen. God made a way, the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can tell the Father about that. There is no name, other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. You must be born again. I don't care how religious you are. My dog's religious. He religiously barks every time somebody comes in the yard. He religiously eats anything you throw out there. He religiously goes out there and makes a mess in a certified. He's religious. But he ain't going to heaven. You must be born again. We sang that song earlier, when we all get to heaven. I changed the words to it, Miss Christie. I apologize if that's offensive. If we all get to heaven. The reality is we're not all going. 
We're not all going. And the last part of that thing says, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Not everybody's going to sing and shout when they see Jesus. Be when they hear apart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. There'll be some shouting, there'll be weeping and wailing, but there will be no victory. Lord. Could you imagine that? Bless I can't Lord. wait to see him. Hey. Oh, I want to see him look Lord. upon his face. They're the same forever. I'm the same Lord. grace on the street of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past home at last ever to rejoice. I want to see him. Amen. I want to see him. The one that loved me. I want to meet Peter and James and Paul and John. I want to see my family members that's gone on. Three miles away. I want to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to see the one that cared for me and loved me when I was unlovable. I want to see the one that's willing to give the best that he had and all that he had for me. Unfit and unworthy. I want to see him. I want to see him. Yeah. you imagine what that's going to be like just to see him? I see him Lord. I'm not worried about the city. I'm not worried about the mansion. I'm not worried about the street of gold. You give me an outhouse on the outside and I'd be just fine. I don't care. I want to see him. No greater love. I want to see him. I want to see that kind of love. I want to see that kind of individual. I want to see him. Amen. But I get to see him forevermore. Praise God. Could you imagine when this life ended and this life's over to walk before him? My true Lord. And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm. I never knew you depart. Yes. Because I'm going to tell him, you ain't going to say a word. Mm -hmm. When you see him, there ain't nobody else ever seen him that spoke. Mm -hmm. Moses seen the hinder parts. They had, had a veil upon him. And he was so bright that he couldn't say or do anything. Yeah, you, Lord. The disciples were scared for their life and hid their face. Yes. Could you imagine? Would you, Lord? Notice verse number four. What more could have been done yeah, no. to my vineyard that I haven't done in it? Yeah. Wherefore, when I looked, it should bring forth fruit, grapes, yeah. brought it forth wild grapes. Yes. His heart's broken. Yes. He said, I give it my best. I did my all. I give yes. it the best that it had. And, and it didn't do what it should have done. Amen. It did what it should have done. Look at verse number five. Did you move? And now go to. I will tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. This is the thing that he loves, the thing that he's gave everything for. I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Yes. God's preparing to send judgment. Yes. First Peter chapter 4 put it this way. said, if judgment begin first the house of God, what shall then be? Little yes. day, not the gospel. Right. You and I are going to stand in judgment yes. first, church. Yes. You and I are going to give an account for every Thank deed done Lord. in this body, whether it was good or evil. You can hide it from me, mom and daddy, husband or wife, school teacher, whoever, yes. but you ain't hiding a thing from God. Yes. The book's going to be open that day. Everything you said, done, or thought is written down. And our works is going to be tried as though by fire. You, now come out, wood, hay, and stubble, and we'll suffer great loss. Or gold or silver or precious gems. Yes. Some will be saved as though by fire. Mm -hmm. Won't have nothing to show for. Judgment's going to begin. Yes. He said he'd take away the heads of protections being yes. removed. Church, you and I are the last line of defense the lost and dying world has. Yes. Right. Your brother. How should that escape if they don't let such a great salvation? Mm -hmm. The reality is God answers that question, they can't. There is no escape other than Jesus. Praise God. God said it just didn't work. He desires to save all. He loves all, but some just won't come. He's going to take away the hedge. He said it'll be, he's going to break down the wall. He said it'll be trodden down. Something that's trodden down is disrespected. Have you ever seen God and church more disrespected than Dan Iron than it is right now? People used to respect the church. They'd turn down their music. They wouldn't drink and do dope and try to break in and destroy stuff. But it's been drawn down. The reality is he's just going to leave it alone. That's the worst thing possible. He's just going to leave it alone. 
That's what he's going to do. He said, I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the walls thereof, and it will be trodden down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Yeah. You know what he just said? He said, it's going to die. Yeah. It's going to die. The reality is, I'm afraid the church as we know it has began to spiritually die. Mm -hmm. We can say it's the preacher's fault. We can say it's the deacon's fault or the music's fault or whatever's fault. The reality church is my fault. Hey, and it's your fault. Yeah. God gives you the best and God gives me the best. He's supplied more yeah, than, buddy. he's more than enough. Amen. It's you and I that's not enough. Mm -hmm. We've not done enough. He's going to remove the rain. He's just going to watch it be destroyed. Yeah. That rain, in case you're wondering, speaks of his spirit and his blessing. Yeah. No. The fruit <laughs> God is looking for is simply spiritual growth in his children. Love, mercy, long-suffering, sinners being saved, saints being helped. God's done all he can do. Yeah, but I close more. tonight with one question. What more can you do? I'm going to change that a little bit even. What more should you do? Yes, but I more. Are we doing all we can for God? Yes, we will. Are we doing all that we can? Yes. I if I get talked to saved and they're born again, are they surrendered to God? Mm -hmm. Are we yes, serving God fully, wholeheartedly? Yes. Are we I giving Him more. our best? Are we giving Him our all? Are we praying like we ought to be? Are we using our talents like we ought to be? God's blessed us with a lot of things. Amen. Are we studying the word? Are we sharing our testimony? Are we witnessing? Mm -hmm. Are we doing the, giving exactly what God would have us to give? When we stand on judgment day before God Almighty, can we say, God, I tried my best to build a wall yeah. for my family. I tried my best to build a wall for your church. I tried my best. I planted the best thing that I had. I did everything that I could for you. Can we say that? He did. Amen. We'll be judged for our service. Yes. You more? We're going to be judged on whether we're a sinner or not. Yes. Our sins is gone. Our service is all that matters. But you more? God's children have put themselves in bondage. Look at verses 12 and 13 right quick. Yes. Or verse 13 and 14. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. <laughs> My people are destroyed how? From a lack of knowledge. Amen. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. They've wilted. Why? Because God's removed the water. You don't want it. You're not interested in it. Fine. He ain't going to force it on you. But notice the results in verse number 14. Therefore, hail hath enlarged herself. Yeah. And opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Folks is dying and going to hell. Yes. Bless him, Lord. Because you and I aren't what we ought to be. Bless him, Lord. We're not using him, what Lord. God's given us. Bless Lord. If one sinner dies and goes to hell, there ain't nobody say it's God's fault. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many could die and walk right past us and go to hell. Bless him, Lord. Say, so why didn't you tell me? Why didn't mm -hmm. you show me? I wonder what kind of grape, what kind of fruit we are before lost and dying. Are we bitter? Bless him, Lord. Are we hateful? Are we hurtful? Are we harmful? Bless him, Lord Jesus. Or are we sweet? Bless him, Lord. Jesus said if some having compassion makes the difference. Yes. I'm afraid too many times we're like Job and buddies. We know everybody else's issue and problem and judge them for it. Yes. <laughs> well, I more. What more could we do, sir? Yes. You've got family members and friends and loved ones on their way. Well, I see more. We see more. I do too. <laughs> we're just going to sit back Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night and say, if they come, they come. If they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. A couple more. I wonder what kind of difference we're making and what kind we should. Bless him, Jesus. What more can God do? I think the answer there is not enough. Yes. 
But I ask you tonight, what more can we do? What more can we do as individuals? What more can we do as families? What more can we do as a church? Preacher, it's the last day, and I, and I understand that. It's been the last day since Calvary. But God will let the Spirit upon man and save multitudes. He said he was saved. He, was right. he still saves. Amen. What more could God do? I see more. The reality is, after all this happens, the king dies, God sends judgment, but you know what? God saved in the very next chapter. And in your king, Uzziah died, chapter 6, verse 1, I saw also the Lord. And you know how he was? He was high and lifted up. And his train did fill the temple. And he had six wings, and the seraphims was there. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly. And one cried out unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Smoke coming that place, the tempers begin to shake. Yeah. He cried out. He said, I'm an unclean person. Not my limbs are unclean. So you know what he did? He said, a live coal from off that altar. Yeah. And, him. and he called him. Yeah. Even in the midst of something falling apart and God saying, I can't do any more. What more can you do? God still saved. Yes, amen. Church, it's time to get serious about serving yeah. God. We're almost home. Hallelujah, amen. I don't want to give the devil any more. Right. I want to see him saved, don't you? Yes. So we stand to our feet tonight. I ask you that simple.